So today, um, I had thought that we would uh, wrap up the, the cryptogram problem. However, the, it takes some time to do the editing down of the tapes. We have five hours of videotape to boil, to compress down into the, the key moments uh, and uh, to give so that uh, all, everyone will be able to see the uh, uh, um, what it was like on the other teams. And so tomorrow we're going to do that editing, and then Thursday that will be the class uh, on Thursday. So today I want to launch into problem three, uh, which we were going to launch on Thursday. Now, <clears throat> um, problem, th problem three is uh, uh, especially, uh, um, well, I think it's, it's, it combines so many aspects of computer science that it's going to turn out to be uh, uh, one, an especially instructive problem. And, uh, and it, the, in, initially, it involves logic. That's why I had the cryptogram I did yesterday. The, last, the, last, the closing words of it were, that's logic. And that's the transition between problem two and problem three. Um, uh, although it also, it also uh, uh, gets into uh, techniques of, of uh, heuristic search, uh, at least in, in, in one way of looking at the problem, um, one reasonable way, and also uh, uh, combinatorial algorithms for covering problems. And, and uh, because we're going to be solving a special case of a NP-complete uh, problem, where we're going to be trying to get as good a solution as we can. To a uh, uh, to a covering problem, uh, so it ties together lots of lots of things, and there are many ways to approach this. Um, I was amused that uh, to hear about the Alice uh, program that Arif mentioned a, few, a week or so ago, because I already had known what the cryptogram was going to be. Uh, uh, that uh, and here you were talking about maybe having Alice uh, so working solving this uh, uh, solving this. Uh, this thing that had a little bit to do with Alice, as we as we know now, um, and uh, uh, so I'm still not personally familiar with that program. But that's again a case where that kind of searching, uh, uh, constraint, what you call it, constraint satisfaction, uh, might be might be relevant. Now the um, uh, okay, so the main thing to get to get going on problem three, however, is just to understand exactly what the problem is and to see the kind of circuit that we're dealing with. Because it also has some interesting hardware implications, um, and uh, and uh, the circuit that we're that uh, the the, uh, the problem in pro does anybody remember anything about problem problem three or have you have you looked at it at all? Uh, somebody said no, not at all. Okay, well the. The idea is that, we're, that we, we've got an interesting circuit. The circuit is for a multiplier, a parallel multiplier. And uh, I'm going to talk more, we're going to discuss, uh, but I guess I'll do a lot of the talking since, uh, today more than usual. Um, uh, the, uh, the ideas of this, of this multiplier. Parallel means what? If I say something's a parallel multiplier in hardware, what is that? Why do I say? A lot of things at the same time. Tries to do a lot of things at the same time. Yeah, we're trying to to to, to minimize the depth of the circuit, um, uh, the no, the number of gates that you have to go through in order to get your output signals between the input and output, uh, and the the fewer that is, the more parallel the circuit is, uh, I guess. And so, uh, uh, like a parallel adder, tries to do the carry propagation in a in a Minimum time, so that you don't have to wait for, like, if you have a, if you want to add 100 bit numbers, you don't have to wait 100 <coughs> steps to get the carry to go to the end. And uh, so, parallel multiplier. Similarly, we try to imagine that um, somebody was, uh, we, we're designing a supercomputer of some sort that uh, the the speed of the multiplier is critical. We want to make sure that we get uh, very 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 soon uh, from the input to the output. Um, and the cost of hardware is no object. I mean, if you have to have lots of gates in order to do this, pay for lots of gates. The more important thing is to get the speed. Um, that's uh, at least that's some 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 of the implication of this. So that we're we're more interested in minimizing the depth of the circuit than minimizing the size of the circuit. Okay. Now, um, suppose we have a circuit. It's got lots of gates in it. Um, 
then it's been manufactured, and the question is, did did the did uh, something go wrong in the manufacture? Is there does this does this circuit that somebody just now since not that the that there's a, a, a logical error in our design or, or, a, or, a, or you know in our proof we we can prove that the circuit is correct, but we but uh, but the manufacturing process uh, uh, maybe some. Uh, um, since, you know, imperfections of one sort or another have crept in. And uh, so we want to know, if, uh, uh, we, we assume that uh, the thing is, the process of manufacture is sufficiently reliable that, that we haven't lost, <coughs> that we haven't lost much of the circuit. And in, for the purpose of this problem, we assume that only one part of the circuit is going to be defective. And in fact, it's defective in a particular way that they call stuck at faults. This means that that uh, the, um, a, a gate uh, that's computing a, a, a binary function of its inputs is either always producing zero or always producing one as its output. Uh, uh, always true or always false because uh, uh, it's been, it's been uh, badly manufactured. Um, and we would like to know that if we, we would like to have a small number of test cases that would that if if it passed the test cases, uh, then it doesn't have any of these stuck at faults. Uh, not a single stuck at fault, in both senses of that word, uh, of that sentence. Uh, it, it doesn't have any single stuck at faults. Um, uh, but it might be possible that that the that uh, it'll have two faults or 82 faults. That uh, uh, and, and it'll still pass all of our test cases. We're, we're, we're only giving a, a set of test cases that are supposed to detect the errors of the single st um, stuck at fault. Uh, we don't correct them. We, after our test cases are run through, we won't know necessarily what, which gates are, are flaky, uh, which gate is stuck. Uh, we just know that, uh, that the, uh, the chip or whatever it is we've manufactured ought to be tossed out. We haven't figured out which uh, which part of it is is, is wrong. So uh, <coughs> um, the test cases then are numbers to be multiplied x y and uh, x x i y i and if, and we and we also know the product z i and uh, for i equals one to n we we multiply we, we put x i y y i in the inputs and we check to see if the output is equal to z i <coughs> and if the if it matches for all n. Then we've got we 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 know that we have no single stuck at fault. Um, the question that we're trying to solve in this class then will be to find the smallest n for which we for which there exists a a uh, set of these x i y. The smallest would be the smallest that the class can find unless we can also find a proof that we have smallest. It seems to be unlikely at the moment that that we're going to have a a method of actually exhausting all all smaller n unless somebody can come up with a, a really you know, a solution like n equals 3 or something like this, which uh, happens to detect all of them, then uh, we could probably prove that no solution with n equals 2 would work. But um, I suspect that we can get n down in the, uh, uh, in the, in the range of, uh, um, uh, you, you know, a couple dozen or what did I say in the problem, less than 16, I I mean, something like that. Anyway. Um, uh, we should be able to get it. We should be able to get um, uh, n reasonably small, um, um, not too much greater than 10, maybe even <coughs> 10. Uh, but I would be surprised if we got it down to 10. Uh, although there are uh, this particular circuit, I think it was 401 gates, making a total of 802 single stuck at faults because each gate could be stuck in two ways. So there's 800 and some 802 uh, um, faults to detect, and uh, we want to cover them with uh, something like 20 cases, uh, let's say, which means that each case um, has to cover about 40 on the average uh, that nobody else covers or something like that. I mean, there's uh, there will be uh, a lot of a lot of inputs will, of course, overlap with other uh, with other uh, uh, with other cases, and so a single 
input x, y might detect um, many different stuck-at faults that will cause x times y to be multiplied badly. Um, uh, so, but uh, somehow we, we want to cover with about with uh, with 20 or fewer uh, test cases all 802 of the of the stuck at faults. Okay, so now um, does anybody know anything about p parallel adding? First of all, before I go into parallel multiplying, does anybody know know a way to to uh, to do a circuit that would that would add um, n bit numbers efficiently? <coughs> Just you about thing. that. Carry look ahead. At, uh, what does carry look ahead mean to you? <coughs> it doesn't wait for the carries to ripple through the, the lower stages. It computes them by having two levels, uh, an and a lower level, I think, um, where the, the gates have a, a larger number of inputs to compensate for. Okay. Uh, now, can you be specific? Let's try to design a, um, a circuit uh, first um, for, for, for let's, let's say, binary addition. Um, uh, four bit numbers, for example. Well, um, let's see, each. So I call them um, X3. I guess I'll, I'll number them this way. Okay, well, each stage either produces a new carrier or propagates uh, three different. So we're going to add these in binary and, uh, and we get carries. Uh, so let's call this. Uh, um, Say Z naught, Z1, Z2, Z3, and then there's carries C0, C1, C2, um, C3. These are carries in the formula. What would be a formula for Z naught um, and, Z, and C naught? The, the formula is the same for each case. So that's Z, Z sub uh, I is equal to, this is the thing without carries. Um, X I plus Y I mod two. Uh, which is <laughs> also known as X I exclusive or Y I and I and I think in your in the uh, handout I I used uh, uh, what did I use? Yeah, circle plus for exclusive or that's my favorite notation for exclusive or I think it's gotta win over all the other notations someday. Um, it's, uh, it's, I like to also use it for um, um, when the x's are, are arbitrary um, non-negative integers. When x and y are arbitrary non-negative integers, the exclusive or, I mean, x circle plus y to mean the exclusive or of the binary, uh, notate, uh, binary representations of the integers. Uh, it's also called uh, um, NIM addition because the, it, uh, this is the way this the, the, the game of NIM I think some of you might have read uh, the winning strategy is based on uh, getting to positions where the the exclusive or in this sense of all the piles is zero those are the those are uh, uh, positions from which if you take anything off of a pile you, you're, you're bound to destroy that condition but then there's another move that you can make to, to restore the condition at the NIM sum is zero so exclusive or of, of integers turns out to be an interesting operation on integers too. But uh, on zero and one, we know what it is. Zero, um, it's the same as saying we get one if x and y are different and zero if x and y are the same. And then c sub i is equal to the carry. So, so z, z sub i was x i plus y i mod two. C i is x i plus y i div two. It's um, XI, NYI, right. or CI minus 1, NYI, and, or CI minus Oh, no, one. I'm talking about in the first step here. Yeah, you're, so, so there's, you, you, you're, you're looking ahead for the final, kick, for the final. Um, yeah. But I'm, okay. I'm saying that we can add these two, first of all, and we have, um, we have these numbers and we, and we have these numbers. Okay. But then there's going to be a, then one thing we could do is add these. Add these again, and and then we would get uh, uh, another step of carry, um, and uh, until we finally there wouldn't be until all the C's were zero, and then we'd be then we'd be done. And we can prove that uh, that in the next stage, I mean, if we take Z zero, this is going to have to be Z zero here, Z zero plus C one. There's still a possibility 
you know, this could be W1 or something, but there's a possibility that there's a carry over, over here at the next step. And we could use this process several times. But um, now, Marianne, you had a, you, you were going further, and so uh, I need another letter for. For let's let's call this W, and and um, and I'll um, and then see, then we can try to get a C that represents the final. Um, Let's let's try to get carries that represent the final uh, uh, answer. So let's see now. Uh, um, let me say that. Let me use a for the answer. A zero, a one, a two, a three, a four would be the answer. And um, let's suppose that a sub i is going to equal z sub i. Um, Exclusive or C sub i. That'll define the carries. The, the carry that I think you were say, saying, Marianne, was going to be um, uh, the. Uh, it would be one if 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 uh, z is not the answer digit, but the z but z bar, the opposite digit, is the answer, and uh, zero if if uh, a two is equal to z two, then c two would be zero. So that so this defines. Um, uh, a carry saying that it should change the answer from the mod 2 sum. And then we would like to be, if we could compute the C, the C sub i's, then um, we could, um, then we could actually, uh, uh, um, well, then, then, then we're done. Uh, and the idea would be to try to compute the C i's in, in parallel, as Andy said, by trying to uh, uh, somehow have logic that that um, doesn't require C4 to be calculated uh, with 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 four or eight layers of logic above it. Okay, now Marion, what was the formula that you that you said? Let me try to write it down. I, I was I was using um, for each CI CI minus <coughs> one, so that's not okay. going to be parallel. Let's see. Let's see now. C. Well, but let's but that that's okay. It was. <coughs> Um, X ci I equals xi and yi, and yi, yi or ci minus 1 or ci minus 1 and xi and xi or ci minus 1 and, and yi okay now let's take a look at this this is a carry this says that see what this this c sub i represents a carry. Let me see. Maybe I ought to make this c sub i minus one. Um, not sure. I wanna, what what it, it's supposed to represent a carry. You know, that was uh, uh, if the carry um, if if z two is different from a two. That means that that th there was a, a a a one carried across from the from the right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so C I it's yeah. So I want C I minus one here. Uh, that, this means that, um, like for example, A three would be Z three uh, exclusive or with <coughs> C two because C two would represent a carry from uh, a carry across this line here for C two. And you're saying that C two would be true if X two and Y two are both correct, or if x2 and c1 or x or y2 and c1. So you have at least two out of the three of these of the x2, y2 and c1 being um, uh, being on. Okay. Could actually replace those last two um, terms with just ci minus 1 and zi since we've already We've already computed zi. We've already figured out that. Yeah. So that so another formula for this is xi intersect yi, um, which in fact we know also is as otherwise known as w sub i, um, right? Uh, or and then 
this term then is going to uh, uh, is supposed to give us a one if uh, x i or y i is one, but not both, or or, or both, <laughs> and c i is is correct, right? But we don't need it. But we don't really need it, the case when they're both on. So, so that's a don't. I mean, that you kind of pick it up if they're both on, but we don't. We've already done so. So, so uh, Rogers pointed that this could also be written c i minus one z i, uh, with, with where even though this z i is not the same. I mean, you don't have this part of the formula is not equal to this part of the formula, but the union. When you add, when you put it in with x i y i, it's equal. All right. Now, <clears throat> okay. So now we've got uh, a recurrence relation for the c's in terms of the w and z, and we can um, expand it out. So, like c, let's take a look at c three for example. That's equal w three or c. 2 z3 and then going up you know that c2 is equal to w well let's put the z3 first um, so that's z3 times w2 um, or uh, c1 and this is equal to w3 <coughs> or z3 w the distributive law I, I guess I'm uh, dropping my my and signs here. <laughs> Excuse me for that. Um, I'll, uh, I'll use uh, I'll use concatenation to mean logical and. Uh, so W3 or Z3 W2 or Z3 Z2 Z C1 Z2 Z2 C1 good. And so this 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 will give me a z3 z2 c1, which uh, is going to be w1, and then the, the last term will be z3 z2 um, z1 c1 uh, c0, and c0 is uh, since c minus one is is always zero. So C0 is just going to be W0. So running out the, the, for, the, the law for carries, we get a, a formula like this. Now, the, um, uh, uh, the idea in trying to find efficient uh, circuits as far as small number of levels of computation is similar to the ideas that are used in programming to find efficient uh, algorithms. We had a, a time when uh, all of the algorithms in computer science were going faster. I mean, uh, uh, like when was this? Maybe the late 60s or something. Uh, every method that we used to think took n squared steps was now being done in n log n. Everything that used to take n cubed went down to n squared. And people would be walking into my office every day and say, you remember this problem um, that used to take uh, n, n cubed operations? Well, I can do it in n squared. And the way that they did it was almost always called what? What would be the paradigm that day? Divide and, divide and conquer. conquer. Yeah. They would, always, they would almost always divide the problem into two equal parts. And then they would uh, uh, have a method that would be recursive, saying if you can solve each of the subproblems uh, on half of n things, uh, then then you then you have a clever way of combining them, and this uh, and this gives you a a, a, a savings of roughly order n often in the in the algorithm. And so these these bonds were uh, were falling all the time. And pretty soon people recognized this pattern of divide and conquer, and it became. Uh, named and we're going to be teaching it to high school students next year. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, okay, the, uh, uh, now, in this case, uh, let's see if we couldn't figure out a, a, a method divide and conquer for this C sub n when, when n is large. C 
see if we can think of a way to do to calculate. I mean, three isn't too large, but you have to think big. Think that three is a big, large number. Um, uh, we got four terms there, uh, uh, or together. Can you think of a way to to do um, eight terms? Uh, for example, C7 is going to be equal. It's going to have eight terms in it, starting with W7, Z7, W6, and so on. The last one will be Z7, Z6, all the way down Z1, W0. Or was it a uh, Let's try to find a way to compute C7 um, in um, like one or two steps more than C3. Because we, we in parallel yeah. bit slicing. Yeah, you yeah. could have uh, you could have something which will uh, compute the carry to the certain point, and then you can you can combine uh, rippling through and uh, carry look ahead. How? Well, you have uh, you you have blocks, let's say, of uh, four bits, uh, mm -hmm. which. Uh, at the end of which you know, I mean, which will tell you whether there's a carry at the end of it. Okay. Like we, we know, for example, here, C3 is whether or not there's a carry. Yeah, and you um, use that as C minus 1 for the next one. So I should have written plus C, Z3, Z2, Z1, Z0, C minus 1 um, as the extra term there. Okay, so um, that gives you a constant factor. Excuse me, speak a little louder. Man. That gives you that just decreases. Oh, it it, it, it would work in line. There's a, there are several ways that people uh, uh, had. I'm not sure what Babbage's way was, but I think it was something like like that. Uh, oh gosh, I should I should really know. It's a, you could do it in a kind of binary tree type way. Right. Uh, where each each group of bits generates uh, well can can tell um, whether the group the, the groups that com that um, uh, contribute to its group um, generate or propagate a carry and. Uh, okay, you you you're think binary tree means that you're thinking that you've got like a 32 bit add, you're thinking of that as divided into two groups of 16, which are divided in each each of 16 right. is into two of eight and so on. And, and th th these form groups uh, that we, and uh, and each group uh, is going to have some pulse from the right saying whether there was a carry from that, uh, from the people to the right. That's the general, right. that's the general well, idea. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, can, uh, and and uh, in order to gain one of the ways I first heard of, heard of the, this described was that you imagine that you compute in each group computes two sum, two things simultaneously one under the assumption that there is a carry from the right and one under the assumption that there isn't a carry from the right and then um, then uh, uh, at a la later stage somebody chooses which of those two groups is the correct one. Well, once you get to the top uh, the the process the, the you know that the top can tell uh, each of the ones below it what the actual state of affairs is, and and then you can propagate those results back down and finally get the result. Mm -hmm. based. Yeah. Okay. So so that that binary tree is a is a is a good way of looking at. It. I think there's also an algebraic way that might be more general or something. Anyway, somehow equivalent by just looking at the formula and factoring out the formula. And so um, um, <clears throat> the uh, so let's see if I can if I well, I'm not sure I can retrieve it here, um, but it's it's like what you were saying. Suppose we had calculated W seven or Z seven W six or Z seven Z six W or Z7, Z6, Z5, W4 and at, at some unit of time. And then we also have 
Z7, Z6, Z5, Z4 times uh, C3. I guess I don't need to write, write it down. C3. I'm not sure this comes out to be exactly the same circuit that would come out of the binary tree stuff or not. But uh, um, notice then this term looks exactly like this term, except that all the subscripts are increased by 4. Um, and so uh, uh, the, the amount of time to calculate this formula is the same as the amount of time to calculate this formula, and we just use the same circuit, but increase <coughs> all the subscripts by four. Uh, then we want to orient this, but that's five, five operands. Uh, it's not what we would like to have also computed is this guy um, simultaneously, so so that the product of those four z's is available to us, and then in so that uh, if so that C7 could be computed in two more uh, uh, levels of logic over C3, um, one level to to do the and here, and one level to do the or. And that gives us two more levels for every. So then we could get C15 in two more levels because we could compute the all the subscripts increased by eight. We could compute the analog of C of the first half of, of C15 by, by increasing all subscripts by eight, and uh, the um, and and then uh, we also have to keep the products of all the Z's uh, of the first eight Z's, uh, uh, which so so we we, we get two outputs, um, one output. Uh, at, at, at level three, for example, we wouldn't only compute C, C3, but we would also compute this. Yeah, I think it's the same story. We would also compute this other guy. Uh, let's call it D3, say, is equal to Z3, Z2, Z1, Z0. And then we could call this, um, well, I don't know what to call it. Because D7 is going to be equal to Z7, Z6 uh, to Z0 uh, uh, at the end there. So, uh, so there's a there's two subscripts. Some yeah, there's uh, two subscripts going on here. But but uh, we would get we would get that by taking this guy, which we can compute in the same time as D3, multiplied by D3. Uh, and so there would be so so that's the idea of a of a parallel add circuit uh, that takes uh, something like two log n steps log base two, uh, when I say log I'm going to mean log base two right now so like uh, log of 32 is five um, and this would take us uh, two log n levels of logic maybe plus or minus one at the beginning um, because every time we double we add two levels. Um, and now, uh, question, could we imagine a circuit that uh, does better, like square root of log n, uh, something like that, something that would, would maybe be constant time. We just add a few more gates and we try to get the, the, the carries into, um, into uh, constant, you know, something better than order log n. Now, the, const the, the factor 2 in front of the log n, that's not, not the question I'm asking now. I'm saying, could we actually get uh, something in which the, uh, the order, um, uh, the asymptotic growth, is not a constant times log n? Could, could you hope to get a circuit faster than that? Not if, each, not if each portion of the circuit has a constant number of inputs. That's right. We're using binary. We're using in gates that have two inputs uh, 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 in this assumption. Otherwise, uh, we would simply uh, take the uh, uh, a circuit that defines the sum of two n-bit numbers, and uh, we would do it in one in one uh, shot. Yeah. But, but yeah, if if you have a, if you if you make that constraint, and you, okay. Uh, yeah. So binary inputs. Show a lower bound. How do we show that we need at least log n? Well, you could. Uh, 
to construct, I think, just two, just a single input pair, which will require you to look uh, <coughs> look at all the bits essentially. Okay. Yeah, you're getting at that. What you're saying is that the an that the the answer depends on all the on all the input. Right. If it was a function that didn't depend on all the inputs, then we would have some hope of doing it in less than log log in levels. But if it depends on all the inputs, if it's somehow there there's a way of setting n minus one of the things so that the th the uh, the nth one matters. No, for, well, I mean, you choose any input, then there's a way there's a there's a there's a case in which that input can affect the output, then um, the circuit is going to have to involve that input indirectly. And in three levels of logic, we can only involve at most eight inputs. There's no way we could, we could imagine touching more than eight inputs in three levels of logic and some more than 16 inputs in, in uh, four levels of logic. So, it, but, it, but if it doesn't depend on, if, it's, if, it, if the function we're computing is a uh, is independent of some of the inputs, then of course we don't need uh, log in levels. But if it's any function that, that involves all the inputs. So does this uh, uh, carry, uh, does it depend on all the inputs? The last carry will depend on all the inputs. Yeah. The last carry will depend on all the inputs. inputs. So that's a bottom. Kind of bottom yeah, that's a bottom. That proves that, that proves the bound of log n times the coefficient of one in the in the constant factor, and uh, for for improvements to find out exactly what the what the exact minimum number of gates are, uh, see Bob Floyd's course uh, 256. I'm not sure what the number is, but uh, he has worked out um, um, also for multiplication the 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 tight uh, upper and lower bounds on on these things uh, in in. in very interesting because neither the upper bound nor the lower bound is obvious. I mean, there was a sort of a, a, a simple proof that gets you that gets you within one of the two lower bound, one lower than the two lower bound, and one higher than the two upper bound. And then, you, then it takes hard work to to show that actually the lower bound is one is is is, is one up, and and a similar hard work to show that the upper bound goes one down. I, I, as, I would, as I recall, I think that was maybe for the multiplication problem, but I'm not sure. Um, now, um, anyway, we, we're going to need something of sort of, of, of size about log n, and this is the method that's used in the in the one in the in in, in today's uh, in problem three, and uh, uh, it's not allowed to change the circuit. Problem three, we all got to be working on the same circuit, and uh, and so the circuit is given. We're not allowed to to come up with a better circuit if there is a better one. Um, this is the one that happens to be happens to be implemented and how do we see it in this notation now let's take a look at the um, those of you who have your thing there I'm just going to be showing the the, uh, uh, the way it looks in our in the gate definitions let's look let's look down here at the uh, carry propagator this is uh, this is a uh, um, the, uh, ad hoc notation that I made up just for the purposes of this problem uh, any uh, 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 several people have uh, 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 been working on on good notations to describe hierarchical design, and uh, um, we need some kind of an iterative construct. And people have been, you know, just writing in Lisp or something like that. But I wanted to have something that's particular for this problem. Um, you can imagine having a compiler that would translate this notation into uh, into circuits, but you don't have to write that compiler as part of problem three. Uh, all you you can do is take this chart here and code it in Pascal or whatever language you want uh, 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 by by compiling it in your head into something. But somehow you're going to have to have to convert this uh, from this this notation to uh, to the internal representation in your program where your programs that that work on problem three will will certainly want to to re represent the circuit somehow inside of them and uh, 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 this is this notation uh, is uh, however formal enough that it could have, that it could be compiled by machine without without um, uh, I mean it would be a decent project for a compiler class 
so each module has a has a, is is declared um, with a, with the first statement being an input statement, the last statement being an output statement, um, and uh, ending with a period, and the um, <clears throat> and that that defines uh, here we have a parameter k. Uh, in the module, so module C K is the is uh, K is a parameter to this uh, uh, to this, which will be a constant whenever we invoke whenever we invoke it. Uh, like down here, we invoke C one, C two, C four, and C eight. Now the uh, the notation uh, could probably be first seen. Let's go on the first one, the, the half adder. Uh, this is the because uh, this one doesn't have any subscripts in it. This will be the simplest case of the notation. Um, and uh, the half adder is what just computes the, um, these these two quantities. Um, uh, you given no, you got three you got three inputs. I'm sorry, x, y, and, and c, and you compute and you compute. So it's not um, uh, it's not the it's not related to what's on the board very much. It's a, it, it, you have three inputs and we produce two out, two outputs, uh, x plus y plus z. Input and outputs are u and v, uh, where where v represents the carries of th of uh, three uh, column addition three binary numbers, and u represents the other. And uh, so so there are three inputs, uh, so each input being one bit. Uh, that's um, and then um, the first thing says x exclusive or y goes to a, x and y goes to b, uh, uh, and so on. We compute five. Functions and then we output u and v, so we have two outputs. And then later on, when we call this module, we show what the inputs are: h of three inputs, and then a right arrow, and give two outputs. Uh, those so that means that a sub i would be the first output u, and b sub i would be the second output v. And so that that's a way a high level high level um, call of a module results in a circuit. So um, now when we get to the C function, then we have a for loop. And it says for i equals 0 to k minus 1. Uh, that's just a macro abbreviation really to says repeat these statements uh, with all the i's replaced by constants. Uh, so this says 0 goes to a 0, 0 goes to b 0, then, z then 0 goes to a 1, 0 goes to b 1, and so on up to k minus 1 um, with the right arrow. and then. For i is k through 15, uh, we compute a i by that <coughs> by that method, and, and this defines carry propagator, which is shifting by k, and what it's really doing is um, um, is the operation that we called c's and d's on the board over there. Um, that is, if you assume that the x's are the c's uh, uh, and the y's are the d's, and then this will shift everything. K bits to the right, and uh, compute the next step over of the of the function. We, we'll take a look at that exactly uh, um, later on. But then the then the uh, as a high level module A is a parallel 16-bit adder, um, and um, it uh, takes then two inputs x 0 15 y 0 15. This is this dot dot notation is a is an abbreviation for Notation with commas x0 comma x1 comma up to x15 comma y. It's as if there were actually 32 numbers there written down with commas, uh, 32 inputs written with commas between them. Um, so the dot dot and the four conventions are simply a way to expand uh, the, the the definition uh, uh, in until you have primitives that are just one bit uh, one bits uh, operations. And, and the first thing then that we do is we we do the first line there. The x and the y's uh, go to the z's, although I, I got a and z interchanged in my notation. And then x and y, those are the w's, which we call which I call b's here. Then I call c1 of certain inputs. Zero is one of the inputs to c1, and then um, b0 to 14 and a0 to 14, and that gives me 32 bits of, of output. Um, C0 to 31, and I, then I uh, then on those 32 bits of output, I, uh, I I call C2, which shifts everything over by two, um, and uh, then I call C4 and C8, 
and I don't call C16 because that wouldn't do anything um, w w whenever you have uh, 15, 16 output uh, inputs and outputs uh, it won't it wouldn't do any more so then uh, finally uh, the, the last answer is exclusive or of the of the of the two lines and so now that corresponds to what we did here um, except my notation is also is all backwards uh, disease or what we call what what the, the handout calls A's I should have prepared and used that before the W's are are um, are what the handout calls B's I guess uh, but we the the A zero to A three is what the handout calls G and the intermediate steps are to calculate C D E and F before you get to G um, <clears throat> and uh, the after like um, like E and F represent the calculations after you've formed groups of uh, like e, e represents uh, when you've got four things when you've got four terms here and F represents when you got eight terms and G represents when you got uh, no I'm sorry D represents four terms E eight and so on um, but I've used um, in order to save letters I guess I, um, I I lumped all 32 outputs as one letter I mean I call it C0 to 31 for the 32 outputs that they carry but really the first 16 outputs are outputs like these guys and this and the other outputs are like these guys um, now then then the final coup de gras is the addition of the last carry to to the Z and and in this adder it throws away the carry off the left end because after you multiply two 8-bit numbers uh, the product w will never be more than um, than uh, 16 bits so so you don't need to worry about work. this this adding is going to be for the uh, you know to add add numbers that are never going to overflow 16 bits okay. <clears throat> now what time is it so I wanna Ten minutes, too? okay. I just read a neat joke, a, a story about the students at Caltech who knew that a professor apostle never had a watch, uh, and he paced himself by the clock on the wall, and the guy rigged the clock so that it would go 10% faster than 15% faster, and the professor had to race more and more to the, through his through his notes, and he still, you know, well. <coughs> now. Um, <coughs> Uh, and I would certainly um, be subject to such a gimmick. <laughs> but isn't the end of that story that then he finally caught on and was furious and gave them a pop quiz that was really long and hard and <laughs> freaked the clock so it went like 40 percent faster? For some, for, 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 for so, no, the book, this book I was reading was written by the students, and for some reason they left that part of the story out. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, um, actually, uh, I suspected something. Somebody might be tricking me yesterday. Uh, I'll tell you that on Thursday. But uh, I guess it didn't happen. But I had. Uh, it was uh, well. Since we brought it up, there was the, the in the very first uh, uh, group, Kathy and Marianne were uh, had started with some probable words, and it turned out that in their solution to the cryptogram, there was a capital D. <laughs> Space M N uh, <laughs> in the message, and and um, uh, and it looked like uh, uh, a probable word should be tried at this point, um, and uh, and th these are very nice girls, and they didn't, you know, they they, they hesitated as long as they as they reasonably could before trying to put put the. <laughs> To put the letter A in here, but meanwhile I had snuck out of the room to go back to my terminal to check that the file that I had sent them hadn't been corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been reading, I've, I've been reading about all these Caltech pranks, uh, uh, and uh, you, you, know, you know how they substituted the, for the card section in Rose Bowl game and so on, uh, and so uh, and so I I, I I was in a little bit of a uh, concern that uh, I had given <laughs> uh, that people were going to be deciphering quite a different message, <laughs> and I was glad. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat>
So back to the uh, back to the, the, the hardware. Um, the, um, uh, uh, the the method that's indicated by our, our circuit here is really quite general. It's I, I give it only eight bit by you know multiply eight bit numbers to sixteen because that made a nice size for the for the problem. Uh, four by four is uh, uh, too small to be very interesting. Sixteen by sixteen. Uh, is only to be tackled after you've solved it, this one well, and I didn't want to ha be responsible for all the machine time that could be done in poor solutions to the 16 by 16. Um, I, I know the size of the circuit, but I don't didn't bring it with me. Um, uh, it, I think it just it quadruples roughly uh, when you double the you know, number of inputs, and so. Um, uh, uh, eight by eight is the one that we're actually be, going to be working on. However, I recommend when you when you uh, put this into your programs, you 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 uh, don't sp uh, specify uh, it exactly for eight by eight. That is, that you'd debug your programs first on on a four by four. In fact, three by three. It doesn't have to be a power of two. I I, I first uh, I, I caught a lot of errors in my own attempts on this when I was looking at when I was exploring it uh, by by just trying a three by three case of multiply three bit by three bit numbers uh, you have to propagate carries um, until uh, you get in like here I call C8 but as, as soon as it gets greater than greater than n like if you're multiplying eight eight, eight bit numbers I had to go up to C8 in this call but um, uh, I wouldn't ever have to call 16 well if I was doing um, Nine-bit numbers, I would have to go as 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 high as C16 now. So I had to. Um, so I had to uh, uh, keep doubling until a certain threshold. I forget what the exact. The, the, but you can generalize it. I think as soon as you understand the circuit, you, it'll be clear how to generalize. So whenever this says 31, you you this means to you uh, uh, 2k minus one, or if you're multiplying k-bit numbers, and uh, if it says 15, it means uh, I'm sorry, 4K minus 1 would be 31, and, and 15 would represent 2K minus 1, and so on. Um, various uh, 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 things would be generalized in that way. Now, um, the idea of parallel multiplication has uh, has a parallel adder in it, but there's, there's another thing that goes on, too. I, I guess I'll just turn this over. <coughs> And that is accumulating partial products. So if we're doing, let's let's imagine that we're doing a, a, a just um, a three by three multiplication. Well, in this case, we get um, uh, let's say a two a one a zero. I should use I could use subscripts, but let's um, let's. Just change letters because we only got three of them to, to worry about here. Okay. Now we we got three partial products, and then we have to add them up, and then that'll be the uh, um, that'll be the solution. Now there's a very uh, no, well. If we had, uh, I guess, in fact, this is too this is too small. It's too small. We have more than uh, four, four digits. Like, for example, if you multiply y zero by um, the first number. Okay. That might yeah, this is a good point. Uh, uh, why why do I write these as four digit numbers instead of five digit numbers? The binary multiplication. Because it's binary. Because they're multiplying by zero and one. So so by good fortune, this will not. Uh, that this actually a a sub i is equal to. Why? Well, give me a formula. What is the formula for a sub i? B sub i. Zero and x i. So, excuse me. A sub i is y zero x i, and, and this is y one x i, and so on. Okay. So this, those are hands. Now, now uh, we've got four uh, uh, of four binary numbers to add up, and uh, lots of zeros in there. Um, if because if we think of these as being eight bit numbers, there's four zeros over here. There's three zeros to the right here and one zero there to the left. 
But we got four 8-bit numbers to add, and we get an 8-bit answer. Um, now, one of the I I things is that uh, the zeros are propagating throughout this circuit. And whenever I have a command in my language that says uh, compute zero, uh, well, well, set something to zero, you don't really set it to zero. You just imagine that there's no that that, that zero is on the output line or or on the input line. And if you say um, and something with zero, anything anded with zero gives you zero. And so again, the input is never looked at. Um, and uh, and uh, we we drop out all the gates that we can because one of the inputs is known to be zero. What, why do you have the last column zero thing? Uh, well, I was just uh, going to imagine that I'm putting into an 8-bit adding, adding circuit. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't really need them. But if I'm, if I'm using an 8-bit adder, uh -huh. then I have eight inputs. So I, just, I, 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 I gave eight, okay. eight bits in every, in every one. But, uh, uh, it's guaranteed to be zero, uh, but you can get a you can get a one here. And you take 15 times 15, and you get 225, which is uh, bigger than 128. <coughs> so, um, so so now uh, the uh, one uh, naive idea is uh, is is would would give us a. Uh, uh, a much poorer answer than the one that's actually done in the circuit. The naive idea would say, okay, we know how to do parallel ads, and so we do parallel ads of these two, and parallel ads of these two, and then a parallel ad of those, and we've guaranteed that we've got, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, this, the sum. Um, what's the running time of that kind of a method if we imagine going this to be to, to n bits instead? Uh, we would have to do. We, we would be left with, you know, in one level of logic, we got all these, all of these computed. So in one level, this takes one one instant of time to kept, to get all of these, um, uh, the n partial products. In this case, n equals four. Um, and then if we would do a parallel add um, of uh, by pairing the ends, um, then then we would have log n levels of parallel adds. Um, but each parallel add, taking log n time itself, would give us log n squared, square of log n, uh, depth of the circuit. 